Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai, new thinking, new possibilities. Welcome to AutoLine Daily. On today's show, we're going to take a close look at the BMW i8. We'll show you how you can bend steel into any shape you want using water. And on a somewhat sad note, we honor one of the pioneers in motor racing. Now, on to the news. Bloomberg reports that 85 separate lawsuits from all across the United States that were filed against General Motors have been bundled into one gigantic lawsuit that will be heard by a federal judge in New York. The plaintiffs are claiming that they lost value in their GM cars due to the ignition switch recall that forced the company to recall over two and a half million cars. But as AutoLine Daily viewers know, these people are going to have a hard time proving that their cars have gone down in value. Several data tracking firms confirmed for us that used cars like the Chevrolet Cobalt and HHR have actually been going up in value at auctions. The reason? There's still a shortage of good used cars in the U.S. due to the collapse of the car market during the Great Recession. And that's especially true of entry-level used cars. Besides, as one analyst told us, once you repaired the ignition switch, there's nothing wrong with those cars. And that's why prices of those recalled cars continues to go up at used car auctions. When Ford announced that the next F-150 would heavily use aluminum, everyone began to speculate whether or not its competition would follow suit. Now, a new study from the consulting firm Ducker Worldwide says, yeah, they will. It surveyed automakers and found that over 75% of all pickup trucks produced in North America will have aluminum bodies by 2025. It also forecasts that 18% of all vehicles in North America will be aluminum bodied by the same time frame. But in the interest of full disclosure, we should point out that the Aluminum Transportation Group commissioned Ducker to conduct that report. Sports car racing fans in the United States are very familiar with IMSA, the International Motorsports Association. And so we note that John Bishop, co-founder of IMSA, died last Thursday at the age of 87. Bishop helped create one of the greatest racing series that lives on today as the Tudor United Sports Car Championship. Have you ever heard about bending steel by using water? Of course you have. That's what hydroforming is all about. But up to now, hydroforming was mainly used to shape frame rails for pickup trucks. But on the new Lincoln MKC, designers wanted to make the vehicle look a lot wider than the Ford Escape, which shares the same platform. So they designed the MKC with a large lift gate that covers the entire rear end and eliminates cut lines, those gaps that form between body panels. And they turned to hydroforming to shape the panel. Here's how it works. A robot picks up a steel stamping blank and feeds it into a draw press. The bottom of the press actually contains a vat of water, and the top of the press holds the male die. As the press closes and clamps the steel blank firmly, the male die slowly presses that steel into the water. Since water cannot be compressed, it pushes back with equal force, bending the steel to conform to the shape of the male die. As the cycle ends and the formed panel is removed, you can see water gushing up under it. The panel is then fed to another press where the steel is trimmed and pierced. Then it's fed into a hemming die where the edges are curled over to prevent sharp edges. And then it's picked up by a robot and clamped into a fixture where the inner panels and braces are attached and then welded into place. The advantage of using hydroforming is it only requires half a stamping die. If a traditional stamping process had been used, it would have required six full die sets. I would estimate that saved them tens of millions of dollars in tooling costs. The downside of hydroforming in this case is the slow cycle time. Part of that has to do with the depth of draw. That panel is about a foot deep. But since sales of the Lincoln MKC will probably run around 35,000 vehicles a year, that slow cycle time 
will not affect production. By the way, it's a Japanese company called Amino that's hydroforming these panels at one of its facilities in Canada. Hey, coming up next, a look at BMW's new green sports car. The new Sonata from Hyundai. Recently, BMW introduced its first electric car, the i3. And later this year, the company will launch the second car in its new i sub-brand, the plug-in hybrid, the i8. We just got a chance to drive BMW's new green sports car, and here's Seamus McElroy with that report. Wow, what a cool car. It drives as great as it looks. There's nothing green about this car once you're behind the wheel, thanks to its powertrain. Up front is an electric motor. Um, it's, a, it's the motor that we use in the i3, modified for use in the i8. In the back, we have a transversely mounted three-cylinder turbocharged engine. It's basically half of our six-cylinder three-liter engine that we have we featured in many BMWs. Um, and that rear powertrain has a, there's a motor generator as part of it, um, which, which helps um, in all sorts of ways. It's, uh, that motor generator is charging the high-voltage batteries, um, and it's helping provide extra power on their acceleration. That setup helps the i8 crank out 357 horses and 420 pound-feet of torque. BMW is still waiting for the official EPA numbers, but says the i8 can travel around 22 miles in electric only driving and over 300 miles in total range. There are three different settings you can drive the car in. EV mode, comfort mode, which uses both the engine and battery, and sport mode, which enhances the i8's performance. It's got great power and seamlessly shifts between the different modes. The powertrain isn't the only thing helping with the i8's performance. Engineers were able to add some aerodynamic tricks to help it perform as efficiently as possible. All of the little features you see are really helping improve airflow or helping cool the car without, with minimum drag. Up front, we have our efficient dynamic flaps. They only open when it needs it. Um, to cool the, to get air flowing through the radiators. When it's open, it does cause a little bit of drag. So what we try to do is keep it closed whenever we don't need that extra cooling and, and it has the car travel more efficiently. We have another thing, we have an air curtain over the front wheel where we vent air in and exit, it vents in at the front of the car and then exit at the front of the wheel well. And that provides an air curtain because what we've learned is that a rotating wheel causes drag, extra drag, and if you can put an air curtain over that, it minimizes drag and helps the car drive more efficiently. In the back, we have our Streamflow wing. Basically, it does what any wing would do in the back of a car. It minimizes lift, um, and we try to do it with as low, little, minimal drag as possible. Each of those help the i8 achieve a coefficient of drag of 0.26. While it is a lot of fun to drive, I do have one complaint, and that's getting in and out of the vehicle. The doors open butterfly style and you have to contort yourself to get inside and out. But as I said, the driving experience more than makes up for this inconvenience. Look for the i8 in dealerships later this year with a starting price just over $136,000. Thanks for that report, Seamus. Hey, all you Pony Car fans have, we got an Autoline After Hours coming up Thursday night for you. Our guest will be Mark Stilo, the chief engineer on the Camaro Z28. Hey, even you Mustang and Challenger fans will want to tune in, at least to learn what the enemy is up to. So join me and Gary Vasilash for some of the best insider information in the business. And of course, you can always catch that show on our website anytime you want, if you cannot be there on Thursday. And that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.